Jim here, after an incredibly unpleasant hiatus. Welcome back to Without the Numbers, the series where we scour Star Citizen archives to explain a facet of the game using official lore, flavor text, and the words of the developers themselves, because the numbers are subject to change. Today, we update the exploration series with the Anvil Terrapin. For hundreds of years, history books have presented the Terrapin as a mining ship and an Aegis product, but recent evidence in the form of apparently an ancient scotch-taped brochure shows that the Terrapin is and always has been an Anvil product that came about after the fall of the UEE's own discount Hitler, Ivor Messer. With Messer's expansionist ideals newly vilified after his fall, the UEE military opted for a more defensive image, and the Terrapin fit perfectly. It was loaded with enough scanners, shields, and armor for a ship three times the size, yet it's slow, and remains one of the most lightly armed combat craft yet produced. It was originally used as a picket ship and occasional hot zone troop transport, so it's only reasonable to wonder why it's been marketed to civilians as the premier purpose-built exploration craft for one or two pilots. If you're interested in solo exploration, the 315P comes with a custom scanning package and a tractor beam. The freelancer Durr has custom scanners and cargo space. Both are faster, better armed, and less expensive. Add to that the developer's insistence that a slow, heavily armored ship's primary defense would be its ability to run away from a fight, and the Terrapin is sounding less appealing by the minute. Initially, for me, this ship sounded like an unnatural creation that needed to be put out of its misery. Every moment I live is agony. But I must admit that as I've read through every scrap of description looking for reasons to see this as a lovable monstrosity, I've actually found quite a few. Let's start with my own personal misconceptions. Thanks largely to this picture, I was under the impression that the Terrapin would be a fairly large ship, at least the size of a cutlass. It's not. I was just being dumb. It's actually shorter than the 315P, Super Hornet, and Gladiator. In fact, it's closer in length to a Mustang Alpha than any of those, yet it weighs more than a Freelancer, which is nearly twice as long. It has one utility mount on the scale of a Constellation, and another sized for a Starfarer. It has a power plant, shield generator, and fuel tank built on a larger scale as well. And the engines, while slow to accelerate, are built for efficiency and long-duration flight. This is actually a considerable chunk of spaceship with some excellent exploration features. Still. We have to consider the idea that a slow, heavy ship is expected to explore dangerous space and run away from fights. Even if you assume that it will have a huge lead because of the super duper scanners, you have to wonder why it's covered in armor at all. Why not just get rid of it so the poor thing can run away even better, like a herald? It makes sense if it's a military ship with resources on hand to defend it, like it was originally designed. But, why would a lone civilian willingly explore dangerous deep space in one of these incredibly sturdy and efficient death traps? The answer to this question is evenly spread across several articles released at different times. I've tried to put it all together here. First, they say that the armor protects against a variety of hostile elements, and that savvy Terrapin pilots use their scanners to locate and employ environmental hazards for cover. They don't specify if this means that you can withstand a barrage of meteoroids or excessive radiation from a nearby star, but it's nice to think that you might be able to escape threats by diving into the high-pressure atmosphere of a volatile gas giant. I they also explain how the armor contains heat from all the oversized components on board. The armor must be retracted to allow heat to escape, which means that while the armor is in place, Hostile ships are less likely to pick up your heat signature because all that heat is busy cooking you inside your own shell, instead of going wherever it is that heat goes on better cooled spaceships. Combine that with the idea that you can power down all non-essential systems while you do a passive scan with your giant metal ears, and you've got something on par with a spy submarine. The developers even described the heat venting armor retraction process as coming up for air. The armor also serves as protection from surprise attacks while you're in your powered down sneaky mode, giving you more time to power up your shields and dive for the safety of the nearest deadly environment. This thing is sounding more and more like a turtle all the time. You also get a custom scanning suite, 
while the 315P and the DER have tiny scanners that you manage from the cramped general purpose station in a claustrophobic hallway, or worse yet, from your dashboard, Terrapin users get a purpose-built scanning station that looks just a bit like Darth Vader's bathroom vanity. I imagine the difference would be comparable to performing a complicated computing task on a top-of-the-line system with multiple monitors, full keyboard, mouse, and voice controls, as opposed to running an app on a mid-range tablet that also functions as your phone, television, and stereo while you sit behind the wheel of your car. I know which setup I'd rather use. I think that the Dur and 315P will be for people who want to bumble around space, poking their nose into every hole they can find in the hopes that they'll stir up gold instead of a hornet's nest. And that the Terrapin will be for folks who want to tell the gold from the hornets without being seen, then come back later with a cargo ship for the good stuff. If you want to skulk around on the edge of everything, sorting trash from treasure for fun and profit, the Terrapin will probably be your ship. I can definitely see this ship paired with a freelancer or caterpillar for maximum profit, or perhaps using a crucible as a base of operations. The crucible may be able to carry the Terrapin from system to system, and a slow, heavily armored ship like the Terrapin is bound to need regular repairs, so they should work well together. The Endeavor could also be a good companion ship, as it should be able to house one or even two Terrapins in its hangar, which could conceivably triple the data-gathering capability of the most science-worthy ships in the game. Even so, I think I'm going to pass on the Terrapin. Not because I don't think it will be a fun ship for people interested in exploration, but because I really want to be the bumbling idiot. It just sounds like more fun. Oh, and the Terrapin is a super long duration spaceship with no pooper. I can't just do the pee pee dance for three months while I scan the galaxy for hidden civilizations or whatever. I'd have to have a designated potty corner, and that's not going to happen. Anyway, that's all I've got on the Anvil Terrapin. If you have a question or something to add to my ideas, feel free to slap it in the comments section. If you'd like to learn about the other exploration ships in the Star Citizen, you can click here for my big video on most of them, or here for any videos that there may happen to be in the future. There will also be links in the description to both. And thanks to everybody for watching, subscribing, commenting, and all that jazz. I really do appreciate it, and I'll see you next time, whenever that turns out to be.